this is Dr. Bertha Sewa Aye. I'm presenting a synopsis of Word of Inspiration for today, Wednesday, December 6, 2017. The title of my message was, You're Significant, God Believes in You, Part 2. Yesterday, we briefly looked at the life of Moses and Jeremiah, who all discounted themselves and thought they were not significant. Today, we take a look at Gideon. And my text was taken from the book of Judges, chapter 6, verse 15, in which Gideon said, Wherewith I shall I save Israel? Behold, my family is poor in Manasseh, and I'm the least in my father's house. And here was the context. There was a crisis in Israel. At that time, Israel had no king, and they were ruled by judges. And Judges, chapter 6, starts off by telling us that the children of Israel had done evil in the sight of the Lord, and so God had delivered them into the hand of the Midianites for seven years. Now, they had a social crisis, they had an economic crisis, there was a political crisis, and there was a security crisis. Here was what was going on. The Bible says that when Israel sowed, all the people of Midianites would come as large as a multitude of as grasshoppers, together with their innumerable number of camels and completely destroy everything that Israel had sowed. The Bible says in verse 5 that because of this, Israelites were impoverished greatly. They had no sheep, they had no ox, and they had no food to eat. The social crisis was the fact that because they were being constantly attacked, they were now having to live in caves and dens in the mountains. They had abandoned their homes. You couldn't live in your home anymore. So financially, they were impoverished. Socially, they couldn't live in their homes. And from a security standpoint, they didn't feel safe. And from a political perspective, they had no leader. So it is in the context of this that God sends a prophet to tell them, you've done evil, I'm going to de deliver you. But how is he going to do it? So one day he sends an angel to a man named Gideon. And the first thing God tells him is that the Lord is with you, you mighty man of valor. And so that is when Gideon responds and says, huh, you don't know what's going on, huh? If God is with us, why have all these things befallen us? Where are the miracles that we heard of? We heard God brought us out of Egypt. How come all these things have befallen us? But then the angel kept on persisting and said, you know what? You are going to save Israel as one man. And that is what leads to our key text where Gideon says, where would I shall I save Israel? Like, what am I going to use to save Israel? Look at me. Look, first of all, on a national level, Israel is impoverished. Okay, just in case you don't know that. Secondly, my family is the poorest in Manasseh. And finally, I'm the least in my father's house. What are you talking about? But then the man who was an angel begins to encourage him. Gideon asks for a sign. He prepares food. The angel uses fire out of a rock to burn the food. So Gideon is starting to gain some confidence. So this man leaves. And immediately, immediately, the next thing God tells Gideon is that, look, build an altar for me. Destroy the altars of Baal that your father has made. He's so afraid, he waits till the middle of the night to do it. The next day, the people of Israel are so incensed. And Gideon's father rises up and says, Whoever wants to touch my son, try touching him. If Baal be God, let him defend himself. So Gideon gains a new name called Jerubal, meaning if Baal is able to defend himself, let him do so. And the Bible says right after that, the Spirit of God came over Gideon and he sent messengers to all Israel. And guess how many people he was able to bring to himself? 32,000 people. Here is a man who is in hiding, hiding in a threshing place by a wine press because he's too afraid to even go out and make food. That's where the angel of God found him. He was hiding from the Midianites. This man gains enough boldness to recruit 32,000 men and is now ready to fight. But not until he's giving God a test of fleas and water. I won't go into that because that's not the focus of this message. What I want you to understand is the transformation from somebody who is insignificant to a mighty man. Anyway, even those 32,000 people, when they were ready, God told Gideon, there are too many. Tell some of them to go away. And you know, 
everybody who is fearful and afraid, tell them to leave. It means all those who were in your state when I found you, I don't need them. I don't need any fearful people fighting. So Gideon tells the people, 22,000 people fall behind, and he's still left with 10,000. He takes them by a pool, and finally he's left with only 300 men. God tells him, put trumpets in their hand and empty pitchers and lamps and just go. Anyway, that's another whole sermon by itself. But the bottom line is, with these 300 men, God was able to deliver Israel out of the hand of the Midianites. The Bible says they fell on each other and completely destroyed themselves. How does this relate to you? Maybe there's a crisis in your country where you live or even your own personal life. It feels like it's gone on forever. Yes, God did great things for you in the past, like he brought the Israelites out of Egypt. But now you feel like God is not with you anymore. You feel alone. There's a crisis, financial crisis, social crisis, you name it. But God comes to you and says, you mighty man or woman of valor. You're significant. You're important. God believes in you. See, man looks on the outside, but God looks inside our hearts. He knows us. That is why even though Gideon thought he was a nobody, three levels of feeling low, national, regional, personal, he said, I'm the least in my father's house. But God saw something different. He said, you mighty man of valor. See, inside of you, God has deposited great things. You're a mighty woman of valor. Today, say this after me. I am a winner. I am more than a conqueror. God has great plans for me. I will pursue my vision, and my dreams with purpose. God has great things for you. He has mighty, mighty things outlined for you. As you enter 2018, I want you to believe in yourself. You are a person of destiny. You are a person of dignity. You are a person of value. Believe it, because that's what God sees in you. So you have a wonderful day. Join me on this series as we look at all the things that we need to do to be able to pursue our vision with purpose, God richly bless.